which of the following criteria is used for classification of esophageal motility disorders like now you are very much familiar whether you have heard my main lesson on esophageal motility disorders or you are totally relying on mcq discussion you are already familiar we call this as chicago classification and we all know right now we are following the version 4 of the chicago classification from 2021 i don't think for another 3 or 4 years it's going to change whether you are in first year residency or probably you are giving your exam neat ss uh, soon you can bank on this probably there will not be an update or revision right now i'll just take a quick look at the chicago classification before we move further with the next question i've already told you in chicago classification the disorders are broadly classified into two groups the groups with esophagogastric junction obstruction where they have elevated median integrated relaxation pressure okay why are we calling it as median integrated relaxation pressure because we're taking 10 swallows and every swallow the computer will give you a integrated relaxation pressure and we're taking the median of it not the mean median of it okay and the second category is disorders of uh, peristalsis where the median integrated relaxation pressure is normal so LES relaxation in these disorders is normal that does not mean that the obstruction disorders do not have the peristaltic abnormality they may or may not have the peristaltic abnormality but the primary concern here is that lower esophageal sphincter does not relax well right so classical examples are achalasia cardia and the esophagogastric junction outlet obstruction and for the peristalsis i have quoted two examples diffuse esophageal spa spasm and nutcracker esophagus right okay. this is chicago classification i'll also take you through uh, the the original document from the Chicago classification. This is how the manometry proceeds. So you ask the patient to do ten wet swallows. Wet swallows means he is asked to swallow uh, water or some other liquid. That's why we call this wet swallows. So then twen ten wet swallows. We will see the median IRP. Right. Normal median IRP is fifteen millimeters of mercury or less than that. When the median IRP is abnormal or elevated, the next thing to see from the manometry is whether there is 100% absent peristalsis. All the swallows fail or they are premature. Right? If, if the answer for this is yes, then you are mostly thinking about achalasia cardia. Right? Then you need additional information to classify them into three categories which I have already given out to you. You have type 1 where there is no panesophageal preservation. All you see is uh, elevated median IRP and absent peristalsis 100% of the times. Then you have a type 2 where you see apart from absent peristalsis and the elevated median IRP, you will see that 20% or more than that of the total swallows that you perform for HR, uh, HRM would show, would show what? There will be pan-esophageal pressurization. So inside the esophagus, from upper uh, esophageal sphincter to the lower esophageal sphincter, there is buildup of pressure. That's what you call as achalasia cardia type 2 or achalasia with PEP, pan-esophageal pressurization. Then you have a third type of achalasia cardia, which I have repeatedly told you, we call it as vigorous achalasia cardia because patients experience more severe symptoms of achalasia cardia, mainly the dysphagia and retrosternal pain because here, apart from absent peristalsis or failed peristalsis and elevated median IRP, these patients experience severe spasmodic contractions of the esophagus which are not peristaltic in nature, right? So different segments of the esophagus are simultaneously contracting. They are not like a contraction wave and bolus and the relaxation wave. So, uh, because of that, we call these patients as achalasia type 3. So, here also you need at least 20% of the swallows to show that uh, kind of spasmodic contractions of the esophagus. That's the achalasia cardia. Now, if the median IRP is probably normal, in the current Chicago classification, it asks you to take some more steps to confirm whether the, uh, whether the uh, IRP will be elevated in different positions. But if you ignore that part, because we do not move away from achalasia that easily, but like once you have ruled out the achalasia, you conclude that the median IRP is normal, then you are mostly thinking about the peristaltic disorders, right? So peristaltic disorders include diffuse esophageal spasm or hypercontractile esophagus, ineffective esophageal motility, and the nutcracker esophagus, those things, right? So that I have discussed in detail in the uh, MCQ discussion videos for esophageal motility disorder as well as the theory. So please go through that for further understanding. Okay, I hope you have the understanding of Chicago classification. With this, now let us move to the next question. The answer is clear. We call it a Chicago classification and we are following the version 4 right now. Okay, 